Just last week, we finally got some new and significant information on the death toll from Hurricane Maria. Lack of power to most of the island for months, combined with shortages of medicine and medical care, were all contributing factors to that death toll. Until just recently, however, the official death toll stood at 64. A new study commissioned by Puerto Rico's governor and released days ago, however, shows the numbers are much, much higher than that. There were 2,975 lives lost. That's just in the first six months after that hurricane hit. That is also 1,142 more deaths from Maria than those who died after Hurricane Katrina, which we all remember, of course, back in 2005. Here to discuss the new report's findings and how Puerto Rico is still rebuilding 11 months later is Puerto Rican Representative Jennifer Gonzalez Colon. She is an advocate for Puerto Rican statehood and the first ever woman elected to the office. Congresswoman, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Us. Good morning. Really Thank you for having you. me. So if, if I may, this is, is staggering for a lot of people to see. Uh, yes. the, the numbers so much higher than what were initially reported um, when when you're trying to pull apart what the failures were here because clearly there are failures these are u.s citizens and they didn't get the the aid that they needed what's the single biggest point of failure that you would address what what, I mean, what comes top of the list what's number one well, no, it, it will be that nobody was expecting a, a hurricane category five on the island and the protocols for managing hurricanes were or catastrophe were for hurricane category one uh, so that's one of the issues that the report established, that the University of George Washington said that the island for decades has been preparing for the hurricane season, not for any uh, hurricane category two, three, or four, or five, mm. but just one. So, so the natural disaster natural was disaster. well beyond yes. even what the preparations were supposed exactly. to be. Exactly. That's the first uh, th that's the first point the report from George Washington uh, established. The second one, that it, it was no communication uh, between the, the local government and uh, uh, making that kind of advisory notes to the, to the people. The, there was a lack of communication in, in the whole process of responding to the emergency. Uh, but I, I will say that uh, we were not prepared in terms of the infrastructure of the island, specifically in the power grid. Uh, that was the reason, that was the first thing that went, went, got, went down uh, immediately after the hurricane. Then the telecoms went down. We lost even our radars from the airport. So we were in a complete shutdown for, for the next uh, weeks. Right now, mm. uh, we just prepare for that. Uh, even the federal agencies that were, uh, were there on the island for the first time ever. I mean, we are used to hurricanes, but never, like, in a hundred years, uh, we would never uh, hit, been hit by a hurricane like Maria. So FEMA uh, w were on the island before, during, and after the, both hurricanes. Now they got more provisions, uh, 17 times more provisions uh, than, the, than the last time. Do you feel that the federal government response was the same to Puerto Rico as it would have been to Texas or Florida, the Gulf Coast? No. I mean, the first issue is we, we don't have senators. Uh, I can't vote on the floor. Uh, so this is an issue about the colonial status of the island. The second one, of course, we are not part of the mainland. Uh, so it, it is more difficult to, to get provisions to the island uh, when you need to go to the Caribbean. It's the same thing like uh, Hawaii, except Hawaii got senators and, and got the representative with vote. We don't have that situation. So we ha got a lot of poverty in the island because we, 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 we don't get some of, the, some of the federal programs like child in income tax credit or uh, 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 many others like Medicare, Advantage, uh, with some provisions that are apply. Uh, apply to the island but not to, to uh, not to the mainland but not to the island so the, the poverty level on the island is totally different now with 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 the funds that the house and the senate uh, allocated to Puerto Rico this is the first time ever we've seen uh, more than 44 billion dollars uh, for the process of rebuilding the island never before uh, we got that kind of a, amount of money ever in our history but f of course it, it will take more uh, than that amount to, to make things happen. And actually, uh, we haven't seen all that money yet. A lot of them is allocated or uh, obligated, but have, haven't, hasn't arrived yet. How would you gauge uh, the, the effort the federal government put for, re uh, the, the resources they put behind trying to help the island uh, and, and the shortfall there, or maybe the lack of timeliness, versus the inability to implement and distribute those resources once they got to the island. There have been photos distributed by the press of, of pallets, huge pallets of, of food and aid and resources of all kind sitting on docks in Puerto Rico. 
So was that was getting the stuff to the interior of the island where the worst problems were after it was was that a big issue was that overstated in some of the I, press how I, do you gauge this i think it was it was a complete fla failure of, of many areas uh the provisions were arriving to to the ports but we don't have at that time even the the truck drivers uh were were that, uh, hit by by the hurricane so they were not arrived they were not working at that time uh some of them with a lack of communications to even go to the to, to their jobs uh, so you find the governor uh, giving a, an assignment to the National Guard and, and the federal agencies on the island taking those provisions to the interior of the island uh, because there were not enough truck drivers to make that, that kind of job at the island. So that was at the beginning of the, of the hurricane, the, the several uh, weeks after the hurricane. Um, after that, uh, of course, the, the, the complete scenario with more troops and more personnel coming from the federal agencies on the island began to distribute all those. So, so what should the federal government have done differently? I mean, I think even the report from FEMA uh, established that uh, they uh, need to have more provisions on the island. Uh, Puerto Rico is the center of distribution for provisions for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. So we were hit by two hurricanes. When Hurricane Irma hit us, uh, we were helping the people from uh, Virgin, I Virgin Islands and St. Croix. Uh, so we were not expecting Maria. So you got a lot of refugees and people uh, who flee the islands uh, because they were hit uh, hard uh, by Irma in Puerto Rico. And then all our provisions were gone at the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. That's one of the issues that FEMA established in their report, having more provisions on the island, more personnel on the ground. Um, I, I think... So preparation is yeah, a huge... Prep the lack of prep preparation yes. is a huge thing they have addressed. Yeah, preparation. So I know you're a supporter of statehood for Puerto Rico. Um, is that a widely shared view on the island? And also, have you seen an uptick in support or in the mainland for Puerto Rican statehood? I'm certainly seeing more seeing more conversation about it here. Yeah, I think one of the issues that uh, uh, people in the mainland saw after the hurricanes is that 3.4 million American citizens living in the island uh, do not have uh, enough representation in Congress. We don't have senators. I'm the only one represent. Actually, I represent more American citizens than any other member of Congress, mm. but I can vote on the floor. Mm. Uh, so I represent, I'm the, I'm the sole representative it, and that's an issue of civil rights. That's an issue of people from Puerto Rico can move to Florida, can move to Texas, and they can vote. They can, they can have a vote on the island. Uh, so yes, after the hurricane, a lot of the people in the mainland got notice that we've been part of the U.S. since 1898, but we can't vote for the president. We can have our own um, uh, members of, of Congress. And of course, there is a lot of federal programs that do not apply, don't, uh, apply to the island. And I, I bet uh, the the response will be completely different if we were if we were a state uh, with a representation. Although I need to say this is the first time ever we we, we received more than forty four billion dollars uh, for the reconstruction on the island. So everything we've been asking to the White House, everything we've been asking to the House and Senate, is being approved. Uh, 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 waivers uh, to have a hundred percent federal cost share. Yeah, even uh, moratories for uh, the housing and the mortgages uh, from F FHA, among other programs in the federal level, uh, are being waived uh, for Puerto Rico. But again, it, it will take time. Uh, it will take a lot of a lot of uh, money just to get people back on track. A lot of the people, I mean, 1.3 million Puerto Ricans. Uh, applied for for the help of FEMA. Wow. That, that, that can tell you what's going on. Well, we wish you and the rest of our fellow Americans yeah, on the island of Puerto updated. Rico Thank our you. best wishes for continued recovery. Thank you. Uh, we know the island's going to come back stronger than ever. Thank you so much for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. My pleasure.